Um, we're going to concentrate today on energy efficiency retrofits. And uh, the, the, uh, the group of invitees actually was selected from folks that have been called out as either energy service companies or those companies, contractors, that focus on energy retrofits. Uh, we'll keep the presentation short this morning, get you out selling, and uh, we'll get started. My name is Mark Braun. I'm the Executive Vice President of Cambridge Engineering. And uh, the uh, conversation today I mentioned is going to be focused on ESCOs, but any really any contractor that acts in a capacity of selling energy as the primary value for a project. ESCOs are looking for many things, but they're looking for uh, proven performance, guaranteed efficiency. They're looking for savings and ROI investment uh, thresholds that their clients will pay for. They're looking for those um, reliable uh, investments that have simple paybacks down at the thresholds that their clients will pay for. And today we're going to be talking about one in the heating side. Cambridge Engineering, a little background on Cambridge, uh, US-based uh, HVAC manufacturer, 50 plus years in business, headquartered in St. Louis, Missouri, focused solely on high efficiency heating and ventilating technologies. The, uh, the flagship product, we're going to actually concentrate on, on one that's uh, brand new, um, but the flagship product that Cambridge is most known for is the S-Series, with over 2 billion square foot of um, he heated space in the U.S. and Canada, warehouse distribution and manufacturing facilities, and just reached a milestone of over 30,000 installations. Give you a little history on that technology, which is the foundation for this new technology we'll be talking about today and has played a critical role in energy efficiency retrofits over the last 25 plus years. It was introduced in the 1990s. It was the first time that uh, a technology like this was able to achieve um, two things, a high discharge temperature of 160 degrees and a high velocity technology, so HTHV of 1,500 to 2,000 feet per minute discharge. It, what it did was it transformed the heat-only, non-ducted market. So anywhere that's open spaces, non-central heating, warehouse distribution, manufacturing were the prime locations. It transformed that market. Our market data shows that over 70% of the new build Class A warehouse distribution in the U.S. has been this technology over the last 20 years or technologies that would be competing with this technology. The reason for this was threefold. One, it drove installation costs down, decreased installation costs by over 40%, which drove design build contractors as well as bid spec contractors to love it and value engineer around the product. The second was that it produced energy savings of 40 to 70% comp compared to competing technologies. Normally, these two things don't happen side by side, but that energy savings drove engineers to specify and end users to love and uh, repeat uh, their buying. The second, the third was that because the technology is an outside air technology, it provided free ventilation and improved indoor environmental quality or indoor air quality at the same time. It is a proven technology, and, and this is going to focus again on resources for, um, for you as a contractor or an ESCO to be able to use to be able to convert energy service projects, uh, energy savings projects. We have a, a library of over 400 energy building studies, uh, many of them with utility bills, comparing fuel bills before and after with competing technologies, boilers, unit heaters, air turnover systems, infrared, or other direct fired systems like direct fired low temperature, low velocity makeup airs, or recirculation pressurization systems. And so we can supply those to you, and you can supply them to your clients to help in conversion rates and increase the uh, conversion rates for you. Uh, in addition to those energy studies, we've got uh, third-party par energy modeling that is uh, showing the differences and the savings compared to those same competing technologies as well as compared to ASHRAE 90.1, which is the minimum efficiency standard in the U.S. Uh, considering uh, the 90.1 baseline, uh, the technologies are modeled to show 38% gas savings and 93% electrical savings. So both sides of the equation can help in driving the payback down for your projects and the ROI up. In addition to that, those 30,000 successful client installations are at a myriad of the top uh, brands in the market. So if you're working in a brand and working to convert them from an energy retrofit perspective, it's quite possible that we've already done a project with that brand and we can help leverage those from a pilot perspective. The, the conversation today is going to focus on taking that technology to a broader market with, a, um, with the help and support of the Department of Energy. The last three years, Cambridge has been working with the Department of Energy to set a new high-efficiency 
technology um, efficiency standard. This is a slide from the, the May 7th presentation where we were asked to speak on this same technology, and we'll show you some of the slides as well. But basically, Better Building Summit um, and Energy Summit focused on the commercial and industrial facilities and how we improve in energy efficiency, and we're going to focus on the heating efficiency side of that. So why start with unit heaters? We're going to talk about a unit heater replacement technology, uh, affectionately known as the unit heater beater. And uh, the, the reality is there's 3 million unit heaters, according to the DOE, out in the market right now that are standard efficiency units, covering 18% of the commercial heating. Um, so a large, large market, and all of those are in need of replacement and upgrading to high efficiency. Why focus on heating system retrofits? Um, here's a little, here's a slide from the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory showing the work over the last 25 years in um, energy efficient retrofits and new construction. This one's actually focused on the new construction, normalized energy use, but the, the concept is the same. Lighting um, improvements have been made, significant lighting improvements have been made, 44%. Um, in the envelope, 21% improvement, 27% in the cooling, Overall, a 37% improvement over the last 25 years. But look what the heating efficiencies have done over the last same time. Basically, a 1% improvement. And uh, what we're going to show you today is proven technologies that can dramatically change that to a new line. And the, the reason that that's nice for energy service companies and, and uh, mechanical contractors, there's a lot of, of energy service companies that are concentrated on lighting retrofits. There's a lot that are concentrated on, on you know, envelope uh, retrofits but there's very few that are concentrated on heating retrofits. So it gives you a differentiated strategy to go in after the industrial market as well as the commercial market. Cambridge's commercialization effort, how did we get to this new technology? We mentioned a lot about the S-Series before, the little brief history there, the blow-through technology that uh, covers from 400,000 to 3.2 million BTUs. We took that and we miniaturized that technology down to a unit heater replacement called the SA-Series. Still a blow-through technology, but in a 250 and uh, 350,000 BTU unit. Uh, the timeline for that in 1990, I mentioned S series was uh, entered the market. The SA series has actually been developed in development since 2008, with field testing starting in 2011. We got engaged with the DOE and worked on the high efficiency specification for that technology, as well as other high efficiency technologies like condensing technologies for unit heaters in 2012. We had an early adopter launch last year where we put about 200 units into the market to, to uh, look at field studies with those. And in 13, 14, um, winter of that, that uh, last winter, which was a brutal winter, uh, we did a DOE performance. The Department of Energy actually did a performance study here in St. Louis uh, showing and demonstrating the capabilities of this technology to drive energy efficiency throughout the market. Today, we are ready with all those pieces to do a full market launch. And that's why we're doing these uh, webinars to help engage the market. To look at the Better Building Alliance performance demonstration a little bit closer, what, what the DOE was interested in was what was the energy savings from standard unit heaters to these high efficiency units. So we actually installed side-by-side -side existing units and operated um, them with these high efficiency technologies in alternating months. Um, the thermal efficiency difference predicted an, av uh, an increase in efficiency of 11% natural gas savings, and you'll see the results were even better than that. Demonstration site, it was a 42,000 square foot warehouse, 24 foot ceilings here in St. Louis. Um, we, did, we took out all of the control um, modifications, so we basically had no setback enabled in the new technologies, even though those would have increased the savings significantly. What, what we wanted to do is look side by side, just technology to technology, and look at what the savings were. So the savings are understated compared to what would be actually available in the field with those control differences. Indirect versus direct fired space heating were, the, were what we were looking at. For those of you who don't, aren't familiar with the technology, indirect fired unit heaters most people are familiar with. It's 100% recirculation. The efficiency is right at 80%. There's no ventilation air uh, flow, and it's typically a neutral pressurization situation. The, the high efficiency technologies that we were comparing with and the DOE was studying are 100% outside air direct fire technologies. The, uh, the efficiencies are greater than 92%, and, and they do provide, every time they're on, because they're attached to the outside, they provide ventilation airflow and improved indoor air quality every time. And they rely on that to provide a slight pressurization, which actually decreases infiltration, and the DOE study uh, demonstrates that. 
So why high temperature? What is the HT and what does it do? This is a brief slide out of a two-hour presentation from an engineering perspective. We're happy to do those for engineers that need that. But what we want to show you here is just a brief story. A building's heat load consists of two things, the air load, ventilation, and infiltration, and the conduction losses. I know you could have process loads as well, but we're just going to consider those two loads right now. Um, in a ventilation-only system, many people are familiar with makeup air or dedicated outside air systems. When you're only providing the ventilation, typically the discharge temperature is brought in right at ambient temperatures or the space temperature. And so you might bring in zero degree air on the left and uh, 70 degree air on the right on the discharge side. With HTHV technologies, high temperature, high velocity technologies, you actually bring in zero degree air and can bring it up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And what that does is it allows you to cover both the air load and the conduction losses. The delta T, the difference between 70 degrees and 160 degrees, allows you to use that extra heat to satisfy both the conduction losses and additional air loads. That is the secret to the high efficiency. Um, why high velocity? Warm air rises. High velocity, what it does is it creates an induced air turnover, and it provides a sweeping effect. An induction ratio of 10 to 1 basically provides uniform temperatures, which you'll see in the DOE study. Um, the technology um, that, that was considered the SA series, um, it actually provides three benefits in one. One, it replaces, it's, it's like having a high efficiency condensing unit heater plus a high, high volume, low speed fan, like a big ass fan up in the ceiling to destratify the space. Plus, it provides the ability for optional summer and winter ventilation. So the monitoring system, there were eight Wi-Fi thermostats, 20 temperature loggers, eight runtime loggers on, on there, on, and also the um, package units in the offices were all um, monitored as well in the study. The energy results uh, were phenomenal. 20% uh, savings um, over, the, uh, over the standard unit heaters in gas, and a 15% total savings overall. Here's the non-energy benefits uh, that were documented in the study as well. Um, comfort, uh, improved comfort and indoor air quality and reliability. Um, what you'll see on this graph is in December, we had the existing unit heaters operating. And as you can see, um, there was stratification. These are temperatures in the ceiling and in the floor. And you can see a wide spread between those 5 to 10 degree spread from the ceiling to the floor. In January, we had the new high-efficiency gas heaters that have these stratification technologies built in. And even on the coldest day, if you recall, January last year, we reached negative 7 degrees with a design temperature of 2 degrees. And so um, even in that point, we were able to maintain temperatures with the high-efficiency technology and have no uh, noticeable stratification uh, between ceiling and floor. Um, the technology. Uh, is available with uh, CE smart controls. Uh, we did not test these during the uh, demonstration. It was not part of the demonstration because we were not looking at ventilation. But what this technology does is allows you to actually go back and forth between a ventilation only and a high efficiency space heating technology. So you, it can run the system continuously or on off for high, high efficiency space heating technology. And it can be built into any seven-day schedule, alarm, interlock, uh, to be able to have it be operating in non operating times. These are weatherized systems, so they have rooftop, through wall, and under roof uh, spiral ducted mounting systems. The weatherized benefits are significant because these allow for you to be able to uh, install them in retrofit situations where uh, space might be limited and uh, roof access might be tough and all the other pieces that, that would require additional uh, mounting flexibility. There's a lot of mounting flexibility once the systems are weatherized. Applications, in these 200 applications that we looked at last year, we had a wide variety, greenhouses, firehouses, obviously small warehouses, automobile service centers, boat storage, marinas, retail, restaurants, any commercial space without a central heating system is a perfect application for the technology. Be happy to talk with you more about any of your applications. Today, um, really, if, if you're interested in looking at this, we've got an energy retrofit success plan. And that looks like this. We engage with uh, you as a contractor with our uh, world-class representative network throughout North America to select a pilot location. We then would look at completing a feasibility study. We would look at the current system to review it, 
uh, preliminary design recommend make preliminary design recommendations, provide energy use analysis and a simple payback analysis from what what the project uh, looks like. You guys would install those, meeting your client thresholds, and then your clients will be elated because they'll have that installation savings that can drive the project down to the threshold level. They'll have 40 to 70 percent energy savings, and they'll have improved comfort and indoor air quality all throughout. So together, really, the message is we can change the world together. And uh, we've got the technologies, the proven systems, uh, the, the new technology goes into a plethora of applications, and we're happy to talk with you about your needs. Um, basically, two next steps. If you're ready to, to engage with us, many of you on the call already and who are watching already know Cambridge well. If you're ready to engage with us, submit, submit your project uh, pilot project details, and we will start there and do a feasibility study with you. If you're not, if you want more information or want to actually educate your entire firm on this technology, please schedule a lunch and learn. We can do those virtually like this, or we can do those in person with our representative network. So uh, looking forward to helping and, uh, and open it up to questions. If anybody's got any online questions, please, please feel free to ask them at this point in time. Wanted to keep it very brief this morning, and, um, and I know I spoke fast. So if you, if you missed it, we'll have it out to you in a video. I'm going to 